Hello, and welcome to Create From Anywhere, the Netflix workstation story. My name is Ranjit Raju, and I'm an account manager for AWS, supporting media and entertainment customers. I'm joined today by Michelle Brenner, senior software engineer at Netflix, who focuses on artists and creative workflows. Netflix expanded into content production in 2012 and quickly became known for breakout hits such as House of Cards and Orange is the New Black. Fast forward to today, and Netflix is now one of the world's leading entertainment studios and has enabled a platform for global and diverse storytelling, most recently exemplified by international hits such as Bridgerton, Lupin, and Squid Game. At the heart of this is a focus on creativity without constraints. The idea that creative professionals will produce more engaging, groundbreaking content when not limited by the technological constraints intrinsic with traditional film production. For Netflix's visual effects and animation studio, this means enabling artists with their preferred digital tools and the ability to access those tools from anywhere, whether that's from a studio office or from the comfort of their own home. And that's where Netflix workstations comes in. In today's talk, Michelle will walk you through how they tackled this challenge and how they use services like NiceDCV, DynamoDB, and G4DN instances to make workstations a reality. And without further ado, I give you Michelle Brutter. Michelle? Thank you for that intro. Hi, I'm Michelle, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about Netflix workstations. Throughout this presentation, you will see some before and after shots of VFX that was done on the workstations, from close-up beauty shots to large environmental destructions. If you have any questions about Netflix workstations, feel free to reach out via LinkedIn. One question I will answer now is that I have no power to renew or greenlight your favorite show. If I did, there would be a show called Cake with Michelle, where I just eat cake and tell you how great it is. It would be really boring, but I would love it. But what I can do is help artists and creators make the Netflix originals we all love. My team, Production Infrastructure Engineering, or PI, is responsible for helping to make sure they can work every day, all day, and not worry about the infrastructure powering their workstations. So here's what you're gonna learn about today. What technology did we use? What was the problem? Who are the users? How did we make Netflix workstations? What did we learn? And what's next? Before I talk the problem and why we did this, I wanted to give a quick teaser trailer of the technology we used. If you're unfamiliar with any of them, don't worry, I'll be defining as I go. And if you're an expert, great, I'll have some questions for you at the end. For languages, we use Java and Go, SaltStack for configuration, and Spinnaker for fleet management. Images are made with Packer. We use a lot of AWS services and they're integral to managing the Netflix workstations. I wanted to highlight EC2 as the actual instances, DynamoDB for the data, and SQS to support our event-driven microservices architecture. Those EC2 instances come with nice DCV, which is one of the ways we actually remote in, the other being Teradici. Historically, artists had machines built for them at their desk and only had access to the data and applications when they were in the office. This system allowed for fully on-prem solutions that stopped at the door. There are a few reasons why this is not feasible. First was the vast shift to work from home in 2020. We had actually already started the project in late 2019, but this accelerated our timeline. While people are beginning to come back to an office in some regions, the work landscape has irrevocably changed. The second reason, and our initial project mandate, is that Netflix wants to make content at an unprecedented scale. I've worked in entertainment technology almost my entire career and never on this many projects at once. There are simply not enough artists in a single geographical location to support the Netflix scale of content. Productions need to meet artists where they are instead of trying to bring everyone to one place. Finally, by taking down traditional geographic barriers entry, the industry and Netflix becomes more accessible to all types of people. Losing access to great talent because they live a hundred miles away from the closest office or have mobility restrictions is simply not acceptable. 
The North Star for Netflix workstations was to provide the infrastructure for artists to get a one-click experience to go from sitting down to working on a shot. But they can also be accomplished by building a computer and shipping it to them. Why not do that instead? The answers, flexibility and security. Production needs can change fast. New cameras and new software make it an ever evolving space. By creating cloud-based workstations, adding anything from new features to security patches can be done quickly. A user can switch from one operating system to another by opening a new window instead of a new computer. Instead of waiting for a package in the mail, they can get a new powerful GPU or larger storage with a configuration change. Workstations, like many cloud-based applications, are not designed to be permanent. Artists are renting a workstation, not buying it. The downside to flexibility is accounting for other features that come with a single desktop, such as persistent user settings. When working on a desktop, user and software settings are just sitting on the hard drive wherever the software puts them and you don't have to worry about it. With the cloud-based solution, we had to be more methodical and save crucial settings to persistent storage, associate that with a user, and attach that storage to all future workstations. Asset security is critical. Inside studios, files have traditionally been passed around many different ways, from FTP to email. Every time a file gets moved, it creates an access point for interception. By having all the assets on cloud storage, along with the virtual workstation, files do not have to pass through intermediate services. It also allows for gr granular control of a file's lifecycle and access so they never leave the original storage. When designing Netflix workstations, we had to balance the needs of three significant personas, artists, technical directors, and pipeline engineers, as well as the many supporting teams, such as storage, networking, etc. Let's look, dig a little deeper into these users. Artists want to focus on their art and not on technology. They are the main end users of a workstation. They want to get to work immediately and not wait for a computer to boot up or figure out what files they need to download. Artist workflows can vary wildly depending on the step of the production process they are on, but their basic needs are the same. Artists have source files that include anything from the original film plates to reference images to LiDAR scans. The artists then use digital content creation or DCC applications to create new images. They could be final drawings or a blueprint for a render. These new files then have to be shared for review. All of these steps would ideally be completed on a Netflix workstation, which includes other tools and plugins to manage a pipeline, such as task management and shot reviews. Technical directors have both artistic and technical knowledge. They work daily to improve the artist's experience. They need to be able to create scripts and plugins for the artists and debug their problems. They also need to do the same tasks as an artist to troubleshoot any DCC application issues. Technical directors decide on software and ensure the artists are in the correct configuration for their task. Pipeline engineers focus exclusively on creating pipelines or workflows. Their portfolio can include file orchestration, license management, or anything else needed for the artist to complete their work. They glue the pieces of the pipeline together with Netflix workstations in the middle. They make sure the artist can work as efficiently and smoothly as possible. My team started with a strong emphasis on building a complete white glove product for the artist to use. The plan was always to move towards a more self-service model. The first step was adding features to allow technical directors to customize their experience. The next step is moving towards a platform instead of a product for the pipeline engineers to build on top of to provide a curated artist experience. Starting a brand new project can involve making hundreds of technical decisions, both big and small. It can be overwhelming, wondering if a choice made now will ruin an engineer's day a year from now. Well, I'm here to tell you not to worry too much about it because it definitely will. Have you ever worked on a legacy project and thought, wow, the engineer that wrote this was a genius and everything makes sense? Of course not. The engineers before you were always the worst because they worked with the constraints of what they knew then, not what you know now. 
Now that I have completely demoralized you, I'm gonna give you a little hope. There are techniques we use to reduce the bad choices future engineers have to live with. For all of my technical talks, I like to include this underlying theme of do less, accomplish more. That is, focus on solving a problem and only build what you absolutely have to. Netflix values a culture of freedom and responsibility. Yet, a commonly used design philosophy is that of the paid path, tools and practices that are widely adopted and supported. Engineers can choose any tool or build any service, but it will be much easier if they can use the paved path. They match my philosophy and guide at many of my team's choices. Of course, sometimes you have to stretch a metaphor really far and pave a new path. You need to create or implement tools that haven't been used before. That's when I put a premium on solid community adoption as well as reusability. If one service can solve multiple problems, it is more likely to get used for the long term. In order to explain the technology behind the large project, I've broken down Netflix workstations into the following main components. The first component is fleet management, which is making sure workstations are available and tracking their life cycle. The second component is configuration management, which makes sure that workstations can be designed for any artist's need, whether it is installing an application or editing an environment variable. The following two, package and image management, are both a subset of configuration management. Package management handles individual packages, like a single software installation, while image management handles collections of packages, such as these packages are all required for our compositing artists or our previous artists. Together, they ensure configurations are immutable with a clear history for stability and observability. The fifth component is user access or role-based access control and is how the right user gets the right workstation. Finally, remote display protocols are how the user connects to and interacts with the workstation remotely. Let's start with fleet management. Fleet management handles the life cycle of a given workstation, as well as pool of workstations with identical configurations. Pools are similar to an auto scaling group in AWS, but the control plane controls the scaling. The control plane is a collection of Java Spring Boot services. Spring Boot allows for the easier creation of Java applications by abstracting away some of the common tasks. Java and Spring have a strong paved path at Netflix and many services use it. So the control plane tracks fleet needs and alerts Spinnaker to execute them. Spinnaker describes itself as an open source, multi-cloud, continuous delivery platform that helps to release software changes with high velocity and confidence. It's a common tool for releasing and maintaining services at Netflix and is on the paid path. Spinnaker also controls the creation and destruction of workstation pools. Spinnaker uses pipelines as instructions for creating the pools of workstations, which it calls clusters. Pipelines can be accessed through an API and allow for variables and expressions. We set up a variety of variables that can be mixed and matched for each use case. For example, artists would need a GPU when doing graphic intensive work or extra large storage to handle file management. Some artists need CentOS 7 to support their compositing software while others require Windows to use their previous software. To minimize latency and get the workstations as close to the artist as possible, we support being able to select a growing list of regions and availability zones. The control plane directs the Spinnaker pipeline to run whenever it needs a new pool or more workstations. It connects to the Spinnaker clusters to the Spinnaker API to terminate a workstation once the user is done with it or remove whole pools if they have a stale configuration. The workstation has a Golang agent, which provides the heartbeat and other information about a workstation back to the control plane. The agent lets the control plane know the workstation is still up and in the correct state or needs attention. We chose Golang for the agent because it makes it easy to cross build executables for different operating systems, which was an early requirement identified for this project. Configuration management starts at the control plane, but the details of software installation and configuration is handled by Salt. 
We needed a system that can manage hundreds to thousands of workstations while being highly flexible and easy for anyone to jump in and create new configurations. This is where SALT comes in. The control plane uses SALT to make operating system agnostic declarative statements about how to configure a workstation. It uses a combination of YAML, Jinja, and Python. It has many built-in modules from installing a package to file management. It also allows for logic statements to handle situations such as mount the storage in this environment only or only run the script if this file does not exist. This salt formula example is the equivalent of running a yum install 10.1 on a CentOS instance or at get install lighting 10.1 on Ubuntu. The module is OS agnostic and should find the right installer per OS. Today, over 100 different packages have been written for workstations, from installing software to editing a registry. Salt was selected over other configuration management tools, such as Ansible or Terraform, because it was used recently in other Netflix projects and got high marks, as well as being Python-based. Python is a standard language for VFX and animation tools, so this is another opportunity to create bridges to pipeline engineers working directly on productions. Initially, we used salt formulas directly, allowing for fast changes and quick deployment. Everything was always the latest, with no ability to lock to a specific version. Sounds great, right? As the project grew, the wild west of formulas became more challenging to manage. We created a package management system that wraps around the salt formulas to enforce some rules. The first is a template for all formulas. This makes it easier to avoid naming conflicts and enforce rules such as this formula can be run only after the user information is available or this formula is a PowerShell script so should only be run on Windows. The second is that all packages are immutable. To use a package on a workstation, it needs to be published to a version. If any changes are made, it needs a new version. This makes it very clear what was run. It also allows for checks at the publishing stage such as syntax and testing. This structure made it easier for more of the technical directors and other engineers to contribute to the library of formulas and know exactly which code was run on the artist workstation. The image management process has gone through multiple iterations as we learn more about the users and observe how they actually use the product. A workstation goes through three configuration stages, bake, run, and acquire. The different iterations will show how we move logic around to better serve the user's needs. The actual logic of each phase has been added to the chart and will be moving throughout the iterations. All of the deployed workstations start with an AMI. An AMI is an image used to launch a workstation in AWS. The base stage is the process of turning a series of instructions into immutable images. Spinnaker can then use that image to create a pool of workstations very quickly. However, we found the process of baking can take a long time. We wanted to ensure that while we were in the alpha stage, we could quickly release new features. We didn't want to be held up by long waits while the AMI rebaked. So we only included minimal logic in the bake stage. This included just the operating system as well as installing some internal tools such as the Golang agent. Spinnaker creates the workstation during the run stage. Once the workstation is up, the Golang agent starts running and lets the control plane know it's available to be acquired. During the first iteration, there was no other configuration happening at the run stage. The acquire stage is where a user asks for the workstation. Most of the software installation, including all those DCC apps and all of the user configuration happened during the acquire stage, a just-in-time approach. Like making a sandwich once the order is placed, there was no pre-ordering before the user requested the workstation. This approach had maximum flexibility, but led to long wait times. As someone who will only get takeout at restaurants where I can order ahead so it's ready when I get there, this was unacceptable. The long wait times led us to moving the software configuration and installation to the run stage. This created a pool of workstations that had specific configurations instead of just the basic OS. However, there were two risks with this method. The first risk was the making of many, many pools with slight variations. 
It turned out not to be an issue because, in practice, the usage patterns of the artists were not as diverse as initially thought. The same team tended to use the same configuration for extended periods. This meant that while there were many pools, the number did not grow to be unmanageable. Additionally, the team tended to switch instead of using multiple configurations. The fleet management tools were instructed to terminate pools that have been idle for too long. The second risk is inefficiency. There are always idle workstations ready to go for artists, which meant they were sitting around lonely and unused. This was an intentional decision in favor of usability over efficiency. Of course, this means this is time for another iteration. The third and current, but probably not the last iteration, is pushing the software installation to the bake stage. This is like having a library of blueprints instead of a bunch of empty houses. Real estate is not wasted because, unlike houses, workstations can be built from baked images very quickly as they are needed. But don't forget, we did not do this initially because of long bake times. The process has come full circle. Instead of abandoning baking, we improve the process using Packer more and develop better tooling that allows for concurrent and easier bakes. The team also kept the other options as backup. One of the many lessons from bringing up a new project is hedge your bets. Technical directors who handle the configuration choices are also encouraged to give some time between creating a new one and telling artists to get a workstation, giving us extra time to bake. As with all projects, there are no perfect choices, just a bunch of trade-offs to maximize user experience, cost, and technical efficiency. The crucial part of any remote workstation experience is connecting to it. We currently use two, two different remote display protocols, NiceDCB and Teradigi. When deciding on which remote display protocol to use, the user must know how they want to connect. This is not decided by the artist, but rather by which workflow they are using. Generally, the pipeline engineers who originally got the artist team up and running decide on the workflow. Teradigi is a commercial solution consisting of an agent, software, hardware client, and gateway components. NiceDCB is an AWS service provided on any EC2 instance and allows for browser-based connection and application streaming. Application streaming allows for a streamlined experience so artists can jump right into their tasks without launching an entire desktop. For both of these protocols, latency and peripheral connectivity were vital features. For example, if an artist can't use their Wacom tablet or their two giant monitors, they will not be able to do their work as well on a remote workstation. Initially, all users acquired and accessed Netflix workstations through a UI. Key components needed to allow for improved self-service are in the UI. This includes giving technical directors the ability to create configurations and control access to them with role-based access control or RBAC. The UI is also for operators to visually check on the health and usage of workstations, such as checking logs when a support request comes in or Make sure an artist is using the correct configuration. There are dashboards that check on common needs such as, are we out of licenses? Or did the autoscaler go haywire and make 100 workstations with Among Us installed instead of compositing software again? That definitely didn't happen. Over the past year, we realized that stakeholders were less interested in an opinionated product and more interested in a robust and customizable platform. Our current focus is shifting to API access instead of UI. Pipeline engineer partners will be relied upon to control how an artist experience workstations. The core strength of Netflix workstations will be in common platform attributes, such as reliability, observability, and customizations. By focusing on these and strong partnerships, Netflix workstations can be levered for an even greater impact. To put the full workflow together, a workstation starts with baking the AMI. This is when the majority of the configuration happens. Then Spinnaker handles the fleet management by turning the AMI into a workstation during the run stage. After that, the agent starts up and makes the workstation available for acquisition. Finally, once a user requests a workstation, they connect to it via the remote display pro provider. When they're all done with it, the workstation gets terminated and the cycle starts again. The system is designed for artists and everyone who supports them. Artists can get onboarded no matter their geographic location to accommodate dynamic production schedules. They can get any workstation they need with a configuration change instead of having to wait for a new one to arrive in the mail. 
Technical directors can quickly modify and control configurations to maintain stability while pushing out new tools. Pipeline engineers can build on top of the platform to customize the experience to a specific artist workflow. Here's what it looks like today for a user to request a workstation. It's going to go a little fast, but it repeats. So they select the workstation and the configuration they need. They wait a reasonable amount of time for the workstation to prep. Then they select a the connection. In this case, we're using an ICCB, so they'll be opening the browser. And there it is, a desktop with a few tools already open automatically. If you can catch it, you can see Deadline, another AWS tool that we use for rendering. Everything was new when this project started. New roles, new teams, and an empty repository. We made the best choices with the information we had, then pivoted when real world users showed us a different way. Here's some of what we learned about designing artist-driven technology. Nothing can be taken for granted when making a significant leap in technology. The new technology of cloud-based workstations must at the very least match the old experiences of dedicated on-prem workstations or the user won't use it. Having the same exact experience is the table stakes. For example, users rely on their software settings to remain in place from one workday to the next, but it's not given on a cloud-based workstation. Therefore, it's essential to learn all aspects of a user's workflow so nothing is missing. We focus first on technical flexibility instead of the artist's experience. Both artists need custom workflows, not standard solutions. By initially building the entire product, we are painted into a corner. We are on the hook for making every configuration change, uh, but unable to deliver the needed customization. Instead, we are pivoting to a platform to build a strong core and allow for partner customization. Empowering others to develop with you gives teams more leverage than they could accomplish as individuals. The more the system makes it easier for others to contribute, the better the adoption and iteration. Engineers need to help each other. It's critical to empathize with your users. When an artist calls me, I know it's the worst part of their day. They want to focus on their art and not on whatever technology is breaking today. Observability and testing can seem like things that can be cut when timelines compress, but they quickly come back and haunt you when the call comes in. We have committed to improving this area, such as adding more robust automated testing, clearer failure modes, etc. And finally, I trust only one thing at a time, from the micro to the macro level. From small tickets and small pull requests and small releases, if teams try to abstract too early and do everything at once, they'll never get it right. Doing one thing, validating it, and iterating is how to know a system is robust and on the right track. So what's next with Netflix workstations? Crossovers and spinoffs make TV more fun. Netflix workstations are one part of a technology ecosystem designed to help content creators make feature films and television on an unprecedented scale. This ecosystem consists of many other teams that help us use our infrastructure in new and exciting ways. We'll be collaborating with other teams to plug workstations into more and more workflows so talent worldwide can be part of making diverse content. Thank you for listening, and thank you to my many studying colleagues, without whom there would be no Netflix workstations. If you have any questions about workstations or Netflix, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just make sure to send a message, or I'll assume you're a robot. Thank you.